if we're not gonna remember it, and if we don't remind the the younger generation, it can be forgotten. I lost my wife during the genocide and two children, but I have lost my sisters, my brothers, their families. The genocide of Rwanda has affected a lot personally and uh, in a large way uh, the, the loss of uh, my beloved country. time I was um, I think about three years old, 17 of my uh, close relatives um, were killed and um, by the time I was almost four um, I was forced to work um, out in the field. I was 22, 23 years old. My story was living in there. third generation Armenian American and my grandparents survived the Armenian genocide of 1915 in which 1.5 million Armenians were were killed by the Turkish government. My grandmother used to have a saying that really affected me deeply you know, she used to say to me nothing is sweeter than water. Then now at the time how lucky we were to be there then because they, just then they turned on the water for us to wash. It was cold, but it refreshed us. It, was, it felt good. Some 15 minutes before that, a group of, of our, our families were there. Only they got the gas instead of the water. my dad, my brothers and sisters, and my family. I can't forget that I lost them in only one day, only because they were Tutsis. Best way to prevent a repetition of a genocide is to conserve memory. In working with Jan Nunn, who is a um, professor of sculpture at Sonoma State University. It was put forward the idea to develop a Holocaust and Genocide Memorial Grove at Sonoma State University. This was recently approved by Sonoma State University and the installation will uh, be unveiled probably in late 2008. There are two railroad tracks which are 40 feet in length. They start at standard railroad width, and as they proceed, they diminish in width to what will be an illuminated tower. Railroad ties will actually be comprised of laser engraved memorial bricks, and these bricks will be our memories of those who have endured the suffering from the genocides, whether it's Armenia, whether it's the Holocaust, whether it's Cambodia, Rwanda, now Darfur. It is the artist's belief that as we go through education and we learn about the horrors of genocide, that will represent the hope that there will be diminished incidents of genocide and mass murder in the future. I'm Jan Nunn. I'm the, uh, the designer of the Holocaust and Genocide Memorial Grove. Um, I thought it was a wonderful opportunity to have a lasting monument on campus. So the actual tracks then will converge to the base of the of the tower. This represents 10 feet of stacked laminated glass and it's on a one foot 
black granite base that will have an inscription. The inside of the tower is going to be internally illuminated. So at nightfall, the memorial grove will be very subtly illuminated from the inside of the, of the glass tower. Most all of my work deals with social and political and personal issues. And I thought this was a good opportunity to explore an area of, of social concern, not only to me personally, but hopefully to society in general. The lecture series was started by a group of survivors and social activists at Sonoma State with the goal of learning and remembering in the service of prevention. And I think that what we now also need to do is to preserve for posterity the memories of people who have been the victims of genocide and to give people the ability to memorialize those people. I think it's a wonderful way to have expose students and educate students on the Armenian Genocide and all genocides because this grove is actually going to be a multi-genocidal grove which I believe is probably one of its kind. You know, a hundred years from now we can go and show people that these are the names of my people. We are dead, they can go and still find that uh, structure. So for me, I think any kind of uh, physical structure is, is part of the whole remembrance and it can help people to move forward. I've gotten to meet people whose lives were also touched by other genocides. And I really see the parallels in, in their experience and my experience and the need for us to reach out to the next generations, particularly as the generation of those who survived the Holocaust is slipping away from us. So it actually validates for the Armenians a place to go where, you know, a place of higher learning um, acknowledges that it did happen, it does exist, and here is a physical representation for that. I know how important it's going to be both for this campus, for the community, and for keeping the memory of genocide very much a presence as we begin to teach more and more students on this campus. We've put this DVD together because we're hoping that you might be willing and interested in participating in the development of this grove. The grove will have, as described, um, the tracks, but we will also have commemorative bricks which will be available for individuals and families and groups to be able to inscribe the names of people that they would like to remember or in some way testimony about their participation in Holocaust or other genocides. People will be able to choose between a symbol for the Holocaust, Cambodian, Rwandan, Armenian or other genocides. We have two types of bricks available. One will be a 4x8, which will be available for $100, and another 8x8 that will be $250. You may purchase these bricks by contacting Kate McClintock of the Alumni Office at Sonoma State. She may be reached at area code 707-664-2693 dot mcclintock at sonoma.edu. Please join us. We're excited to have you participate in this project.